Hello everyone, once again I welcome you all to MSP lecture series on transmetallic chemistry. In the last uh, few lectures we have been discussing on the classification of ligands by donor atoms. In my previous lecture I was uh, talking about nitrogen donor ligands and I did mention before concluding about another important class of ligands come under nitrogen donor atoms are skiff bases and uh, a variety of skiff bases have been made and they explored their coordination chemistry and applications. Let me uh, give the preparation and some important compounds of uh, skiff bases. As you know the general method of preparation involves the reaction between ketone and primary amine it is a typical condensation reaction. Let me take a specific example here. Let us take two equivalents of salicylaldehyde and treat this one with ethylene diamine. It gives two equivalents of water to form this condensed bis salicylaldehyde ethylene diamine ligand. It leads to the formation of bis salicylaldehyde ethylene diamine ligand. So, if you remove this hydrogen uh, it becomes a dianionic tetraidentate ligand. This is bis diamine. We know the general method of preparation we can make a variety of bis imine complexes or skiff bases. One can also generate those things starting from for example oxides like this when we treat this one with RnCO it can give a, a compound like this. And this can readily eliminate carbon dioxide to form a compound like this. This on further treatment with another RNCO can give a compound like this. So, these are very important class of ligands called ureto and carbamato complexes. So, that means we have numerous examples of uh, nitrogen donor ligands that we saw in, in last couple of uh, uh, lectures. And there is important class of uh, macrocycles I did mention having porphyrin as a base unit. Apart from that one we also have another interesting cage type compounds they are called sepulcrates. And they are essentially a cage ligands with various sized cavities. So, let me show one example here. So, we have here a
a typical sepu claret is uh, given here and you can see all of them have uh, H on the middle nitrogen atoms. So, this is another important class of uh, and also we have pi uh, pyrozolyl borates also have tris pyrozolyl borates also we come across. So, of course, we can keep on discussing about nitrogen donor ligands in, in length. So, at some point of time we have to stop it and proceed to look for further donor atoms such as oxygen and phosphorus because of uh, time constraints. I do not think I should be able to deal with almost all other nitrogen atoms nevertheless I can show you representative examples. And another class of ligands are nitriles that already I showed you while giving the preparation of important coordination compounds like acetonitrile and benzonitrile complexes. For example, from synthetic point of view these are all very important nitrile compounds. And another important compound of uh, group 6 metal carbonyls is this one. This is a very useful compound. So, one can prepare this compound. For example, you take uh, metal carbonyl where M can be chromium, molybdenum or tungsten reflux for 24 hours in astronitril. So, it, it gives a compound of this type So, this is a very useful ligand. Now, you can ask me why only 3 astronauts have been substituted, why not 4 or 5? Yes, you should remember metal is in 0 valent state and once this compound is formed it is an 80 electron species. Since metal is in 0 valent state and more electron density is coming onto the metal, always uh, although many complexes do satisfy 80 electron rule. And also another effect comes is repulsion, uh, inter electronic repulsion that can always try to destabilize. Uh, in that context CO being pi acceptors they can release little bit of electron density present on metal through back bonding. As a result these back bonding capable ligands stabilizes metals in their low valent state. And here if you consider astronitrile, astronitrile is only a sigma donor and it is not a pi acceptor. As a result what happens when metal retains its 0 oxygen state and now what would happen is electron density does not change, but on the other hand number of back bonding ligands are decreasing. So, that means when we have only pure sigma donor ligands, then minimum of 3 carbon monoxide are needed uh, to minimize inter electron repulsion. As a result, no matter how long you reflex metal hexacarbonyls with astronitrile, you cannot get okay, more than 3 substituted. And whether you take astronitrile or whether you take ammonia or whether you take any other uh, alkyl amines, uh, you can make uh, mixed carbonyl and amine complexes or nitrile complexes. But you have to have a minimum of 3 carbonyl that is an advantage also. So, you one can make this one for example, now if you take this one and reflex with toluene or something it can eliminate all astronitriles to form eta 6 arene MCO3 compound. In that context this is a very useful compound for example, you take this one here and add in dichloromethane after formation of this compound you can remove all the solvent under vacuum to get dry stuff. For this one at 0 degree temperature add dichloromethane and iodine one can generate a compound of this type. Now, it will be oxidative addition metal will be in plus 2 state. So, now let us say if we add any bisphosphine this bisphosphine is essentially substitute for this astronitrile to form a compound like this.
So now you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 are there. So this is a 7 coordinated compound and of course here depending upon what kind of phosphines we are using, this can have a capped octahedral geometry or pentagonal by pyramidal. So now another important class of compounds among macrocyclic ligands are porphyrin. This is the basic unit and it is very easy to prepare this one. one should remember here we have two n without with only lone pairs whereas other two have n h bonds so opposite side. Now one should remember this compound can be made by simply condensing aldehydes various aldehydes with four equivalents of pyrrole molecules. For example, if you take four treat with 4 aldehydes or CHO, it can give through the elimination of 4 equivalents of water molecules. And of course, it is very easy to write this structure. I shall show you how to write this structure. There is no need to remember the structure of this one. First you just write porphyric units without adding double bonds. And one here, one here, you for this do not add any hydrogen and then connect them with a methylene bridge. So now since this one is NH is there in this one, what you should do is you should start putting double bond here. When you put double bond here, you, conjugation is there. So one can go here and then one can go here and then only lone pair is there here. Now here, next here it comes and then of course double bond is there. Now double bond should come here and then this only lone pair is there. Okay, there should be something you have here okay, and then this is okay. So this is how one can write porphyrin unit and of course here if you take simple acetaldehyde it will be H whereas here it can be anything depending upon what you are choosing here. So this is how the basic porphyrin can be prepared by simply condensing an aldehyde with pyrrole. And of course, we also come across another important cage compound used to trap cations, alkali metal and alkali and earth metal cations that is krypton. When I talk about uh, uh, crown ethers, I shall give the preparation of that krypton as well. With this, let me conclude nitrogen donor ligands. As I said, nitrogen donor ligands are very wide in, in coordination chemistry and starting from as simple as ammonia or dinitrogen and two we have macrocyclic ligands having as many as 10 to 12 nitrogen atoms in the ring or cages very nicely they encapsulate. So this is the typical bis salicylaldehyde ethylene diamine complex preparation here. Of course here you can also take any alkyl one you can also get it instead of OH you can also have PPH2 then you have skiff base with uh, P donors or even S donors. And a typical example of a metal complex I have shown here, ruthenium is in plus 2 state, these two are anionic. And then of course one can also make very interesting compounds like this here. You can see co two cobalt okay, are uh, bridged by uh, two bis, uh, two skiff bases in this fashion. And also they are called compartmental ligands. You can see here we have NH, NH is there and oxygen donors are there. And then this can also become anionic. Uh, once you deprotonate these two nitrogen atoms and also you can have homometallic or heterometallic complexes can also be made here. You can see here and then once the electrons can also delocalize and then you have two four negative charges also can be seen here if this also undergo tautomerism. So very interesting uh, ligand system of course they come up with lot of uh, uh, applications. So with this uh, let me a stop and start discussion about oxygen donor ligands. 
when we talk about oxygen donor ligand the first ligand that comes to our mind is water and then oxygen itself molecular oxygen itself of course molecular oxygen one can reduce it to make O2 minus then is that is called super oxo and then you can also have peroxo and then of course hydroxyl ligands are known like O2 minus I mentioned O2 2 minus and O2 2 minus is also there and all alcohols aryl alcohol alkyl alcohols are all one way oxygen donors and then you should remember we have two more electron pairs are there once a covalent bond is established after elimination of H it can also triply bridge it can also bridge three metal centers one through covalent and either two other two through coordinate bonds and of course ethers and phosphine oxides sulfates phosphates nitrates and several other ligands. So when we look into the donor abilities and coordination modes we come across we can see in case of hydroxyl it can bridge in this fashion to metal centers also there can be terminal one also simple MOH bond and also two or three hydroxyl groups can bridge two metal centers and then this OH moiety can also bridge three metal centers or one can also have a cubane structure like this where alternate corners are occupied by metal centers and hydroxyl groups and also one can have something like this also. These are important coordination modes or binding modes of uh, hydroxyl ligands and then let us look into the molecular orbital diagram of water here. Of course, water when you consider we are taking the ligand group orbitals here, two electrons are coming from uh, uh, two hydrogen atoms and then we are getting six electrons here and okay and of course you can see here this and this one. So this is mainly OH bond and this is the second OH bond and then this is the lone pair on oxygen and this is the lone pair on oxygen another one. So this lone pair is of non-bonding in nature is responsible for making water as a two electron donor and we normally do not come across uh, water bridging two metal centers acting as a bidentate ligand and as a four electron donor because this is little deeply buried uh, because of this one what happens utilization of second lone pair for coordination is not possible when attempts are made what happens it loses one of the H and it forms a hydroxyl group and then hydroxyl group can bridge to metal centers as long as it remains as water molecule normally it does not donate two pairs of electrons to perform as a bridging ligand. This for the same reason that the difference in the energy between these two is quite enormous and this is little deeply buried as a result taking out this one for donation to a metal is not that easy. So these are the binding modes of oxygen one can see oxo bridges are quite common and two oxo bridging is also quite common and this is symmetric oxo bridging this is unsymmetric oxo bridging. So here you, what you have is O is there and then this is a coordinate bond and then one can also have a linear bond like this and also mu3 bridging is also known or in this fashion or in this fashion pyramidal fashion or it can also a stabilize four metals arranged in a tetrahedral fashion or something like this or something like this is also known or in some cases we also have examples of oxygen bridging as many as five metal centers having these five metal centers in trigonal bipyramidal arrangement. Some more example even it is not just five it can also you know bridge six metal atoms in an octahedral fashion you can see here six metals arranged in an octahedral fashion directed towards six vertices having central oxygen atom here and this is the common one and of course here another one where you have two oxygens and also you can have something like this or one can have something like this oxo or it can be like this. So these are some of uh, most commonly seen uh, coordination modes of uh, various oxygen and hydroxyl group and with different oxygen states. So when oxygen is made to react with uh, a metal center generally electron density is transferred from metal to oxygen uh, with formal oxidation state of the metal and reduction of O2. Okay. For example, uh, if we look into metals where 
we can see only one electron donor properties. In that case, we will end up with superoxo complexes where we come across metals capable of uh, donating 2 electrons or they have a stable oxygen state of plus 2. In that case, we can also come across oxo complexes. A typical uh, reaction I shall show you. Take this one and uh, put oxygen. So, we come across this one here. Acetylestronate complex plus if we add O2, so oxygen state is changed from 2 to 3. So, you can now you know what is the nature of oxygen here. this is about one electron donor. Let us look into two electron donor transfer. Again I consider a complex that you are very familiar with Vasca's compound with iridium is in plus 1 state. This trans chlorocarbonyl bis triphenyl phosphine complex on treating this one it forms a iridium 3 complex. So, we have a few more examples of uh, oxygen donor ligands. I do not want to elaborate more about oxygen donor complexes. For example, you consider phosphate, sulphate, carboxylate, acetate, all are ACAC. Most of the ligands we talk about all oxygen donor compounds and of course, all alcohol, alkoxides, aryl oxides are also oxygen donor ligands. Even simple ethers, ketones, aldehydes also some to an extent they are all oxygen donor ligands. Let me tell you about couple of more examples of oxygen donor ligands in my next class and I shall move on to discuss another important class of ligands, very very important class of ligands that is phosphines which play a major role in organometallic chemistry and also utility of organometallic compounds and coordination compounds in homogeneous catalysis for a variety of organic transformation. Let me stop this lecture and continue in my next lecture about other ligand system.